I'm gonna get an audio check on Twitch. Let's see, watch now, testing, testing, one, two, three. Yep, that works. Okay, so we're live. We are. You ready to go? Let's do it. Okay. Okay, 262. Ready? Okay. Yep. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 262 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. I'm Hayam and Tom. Well, Tom's down there for me, but I think he's oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm here. I'm it's, in a square. It's It's been a year. Uh, well, what that literally means, it's that I remember March 14th was the last day of school for me, uh, but it's been a year. The good news is, I think ever. I think at this point, I told everyone last time, I am fully, fully vaccinated. Uh, so that is awesome. Um, I did my two weeks. My wife has done her two weeks. The all the parental people have done their two weeks. So I still can't go anywhere because I have kids and they're in school, and we're trying to be safe. So, but we are. I can now congregate in a room with other vaccinated people. That's what the CDC tells me. So that is awesome. Anyway, anyway, uh, enough of the small talk. Any before we get into our main topic, I don't think there was any big news of the week. Like any, uh, I mean, yeah, like there, there was a big, there was kind of a, a big hack with uh, a bunch of, um, I mean, really just corporations everywhere. But uh, particularly here's here's a, a story about um, some massive uh, Australian companies hit by. Uh, a really, really nasty uh, Microsoft Exchange vulnerability. Um, yeah, yeah, I, we're we're gonna see news rolling out of this for a while now. But uh, keep your patches up to date, especially if you're running Exchange, because um, yeah, this is this is kind of a kind of a big one. I was gonna. I heard that there was a couple of there's a bunch of zero days in Exchange, and that was not good. Uh, Again, I mean, it's not worth the, for us. This is not the scope to talk about exactly what's going on. You have zero. I mean, you're not going to be able to change anything other than patch. Just keep everything patched and and standard internal protocol. So we want to go from there. But our main and story. Oh, keep keep in mind that it, when when we say exchange vulnerabilities, that doesn't necessarily mean vulnerabilities. Unlike if you're using exchange like on the web as your email provider or like you use exchange at home as your email program this is specifically for exchange server so if you are managing microsoft exchange for a business uh if you are running microsoft exchange software on your servers yet you should be concerned and you should be patching but like if you're just using exchange at home for your own email or even using like exchange the web email service you don't have to worry it's fine. I mean, it's just, it's, it's more of these hacks and it's one of those things that we keep on telling you stick to the big guys and they will hopefully patch and keep stuff patched and everything else. But talking about exchange and email, what is, uh, let's, today's topic is email, like just email, like plain old email. And the question came up, Actually, this came actually in our signal group and we were talking about it the day before anyway, but it came up in the signal group. Should I move my email? So the story goes, uh, Gizmodo, which is getting better journalistically in the last few years, comes up with five reasons why you should move to something. I don't know, Proton Mail or whatever it is. And I thought about it for a second. And then I looked at the price. It was a couple dollars per month per user. And I said, do I want another subscription to email? And then I thought about it. How much email do you really get? And I'll go first. I get very little actual email. Um, let's ask Tom. Do you get any email? I Occasionally, like today, I checked. And, like, I get a lot of spam. Uh, but today I checked and I, I got somebody saying, hey, will you give me a price to put a spammy article on your website? And I'm, I'm not going to reply to that. Uh, and then I got something from like a car dealership saying, Hey, please come in for service. Fine, whatever. Uh, and then I got uh, a couple of UPS tracking numbers for uh, 
some Raspberry Pi gear that I ordered. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it. It's it's ex- <laughs> yeah, it's extremely minimal. Um, I don't get a whole lot of anything. I mean, let's let's go f- five pieces of actual email a day. I, if that really, uh, like. And so, I mean, we had an episode way, 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 way back when, probably in like the single digits where I said, I created a second email for everything. Like I use a different name online and everything else. And even with that, I started unsubscribing and we'll get to that in a few minutes, but I'm looking maybe like maybe two or three a day. And I think one of them is the mail, USPS telling me what mail I'm getting. That's important to watch and a newsletter that I actually care about that I want to read. But other than that, it's just not there. So I see this article on, on uh, email and I say, I, I don't want to pay for it. Like I was thinking about it. We had this conversation like six months ago. Maybe we should move this and that. And then I said, I am so ingrained in Gmail, mainly the calendar that I really can't go anywhere. So what, what am I trying to hide from? And I think that's the better discussion. What are you trying to do? And then how to move away from there? So, so there's, uh, you want to get into the details about securing email? Yeah. Yeah. But to kind of, kind of give a rough overview, there's, there's a pretty big push. And I, I know because I've in, I've experienced this myself. Um, there's, a pretty big want and need to say, oh, well, my email's insecure and I gotta, I gotta secure that. And I've gotta move to the latest and greatest like messaging platform because it does like double quadratic, like uh, homomorphic encryption. And, and I just, I need to be on the latest and greatest thing and, and fight that urge. Just please, please do me a favor and fight that urge. There are a million and a half different messengers secure that's air quotes for, for the audio only listeners, secure um, email providers. And honestly, if they haven't made it to the big leagues, if they're, if they're not growing, if they're not the, the top choice on all of the latest security blogs, then why bother, um, right? It's new code, it's new products, it's new tech, it's new infrastructure, and frankly most of these new projects haven't had their tires kicked right the community hasn't looked at large at them uh they haven't had to deal with scaling and that's not to say that you should only use incumbents but frankly when it comes to security software the incumbents are incumbents for a reason more often than not and i'm not saying that like norton and mcafee are the best things ever and you should only use those right like i'm talking specifically about email and messenger systems, right? Why why is WhatsApp on top? Why is Signal on top when it comes to security things? Um, and yeah, there's a reason. And they've reached critical mass and they've had a whole lot of eyeballs on them, um, right? Like Bob's super encrypted messenger down the street doesn't necessarily have the same kind of eyeballs and attention that the big players have. So yeah, while it might make you feel good on the inside saying, oh, look, I've moved to the latest and greatest, newest encrypted messenger, is it actually safer? And unless you're you're a cryptographer or a security auditor, you probably can't say, right? You can look at the marketing materials, maybe you can even read the code, but bugs in these products are subtle, right? Even Signal has had a, a rash of pretty like serious issues, both security issues and uh, like usability issues, which they're, they're still struggling with. But uh, you know, it, it almost pays to go with the boring option most of the time. Well, let's get it even easier than that. The options that when you uh, go somewhere and they ask you for it to email you a receipt, it's Gmail, Hotmail, and probably Yahoo or Ymail or whatever it is. So the f- and yes, I judge people based on their email address. I, I do do well, that, but yeah, of course. Like if somebody has an AOL email address, I, I think you know very little of them. All right, yeah. and not to say that they're bad people, but it's just like one of those you didn't make the move yet. Like, but anyway, so people. If you're trying to sign into something or whatever it is, they look at the big players and they say, here's a Gmail address. So people know what that is. If you have to say, my email is so-and-so at some crazy, some crazy new name, there's a bigger chance that people are going to spell that wrong or whatever it is. So I look at that and then I say, 
And then I go back to the idea that I just don't get email. And if I'm sending email, I know it's not secure. So we talk about security. Gmail said that they're uh, securing end to end on their end, right? They said on their end, it's end to end. Like basically while it's on the wire, it's there. But when it's at rest, it's not secure. And I think they all said that, which is not really saying much. It's just saying while it's passing through HTTPS, it's secure. Okay, fine. Um, but at the other end, and then I think, okay, yeah, I really, I want that security end to end. How do I get that? And then I thought about it, just use Signal. Guess what? Signal does it for you. <laughs> like like if, if we're at that level, who, what are we doing? Just get on signal. Like, here's my signal phone number. Just message me and we're done. And we solve the problem. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know too many people are like, I need to have uh, encrypted email going back and forth nowadays when signal works and a whole bunch of other stuff works. So I don't know. What, I, I, I don't know. Even even to this day, like in, in my signature line of my email, I've got, you know, oh, here's the link to my my public key on my website for email. I, I gotta I gotta take that off. I don't use it. Like I have the key, right? But like it's locked away. It's in a password vault. It's not even like installed and running on this laptop, which I got like a year and a half ago. Um, and it's as as I've you know kind of grown up around PGP, I'm kind of identifying with Moxie Marlin Spike more and more. PGP is dead. Uh, and frankly, it should be. Um, so we'll here's. Start earlier. What Go with what PGP. Let's start with what PGP is. Yeah. So PGP is pretty good privacy. Um, it's it, that's that's literally what pgp stands for um and honestly yeah it's it's a pretty cool system uh and i i do use gpg and the the standard ut uh like encryption utilities uh for a lot of random small stuff that you know oh hey i'm transferring this thing i'm gonna you know send this to this person who's technical and they know what to do with this after i give them a, a pre-shared key over signal um, or, or I can send it to somebody's public key. Like there, there are uses for the base technology, but when it comes to email, PGP was kind of the, Hey, we want to send encrypted email or we want our, our communications to be secure and like not able to be spied upon. And frankly, PGP does a pretty good job at that. Uh, the issue is that PGP is unusable. Um, it is an absolute usability trash fire. Uh, as somebody who literally, like, I was the point man responsible for implementing secure email uh, in one of the companies I worked for because our, our suppliers demanded it. Um, yeah, it's it's a mess. Uh, it's an absolute mess. Uh, and it still is. Like, when, when I did this 10 years ago, the state of the art actually hasn't changed all that much, right? The, the needle hasn't moved very far in terms of usability. Um, so when you want your grandma to use encrypted email, uh, no, you, you can't. Like, yeah, we can, well, we can all set up Enigmail and, and set up like mail.app with all the keys and make sure everything works. But as soon as something breaks, like it's legitimately scarily broken for the non-technical person and they have no hope whatsoever oh well all you have to do is edit your key and go into like the ring of trust and set this to trust ultimately and uh then we gotta rotate your like your public keys and then we gotta make a sub key for encryption and a different one for signing and then make sure those are rotated out of band it's like what do these words even mean man like i know well, it. i'm a security beginning. guy like I've, I've been in this technology but no normal person knows what this means well first you have to get a pgp key which is not hard but you have to download a piece of software whether it's command line or on the mac there was G, uh, gpg tools but there's so you have to create your key now you have this key now you have to remember to put your public key on the key server or that's the one you have to train and then you need another program so if you're using whatever, I mean, uh, Thunderbird, you could put it in there, and then you putting a, then you have to set that up, and now you have to share this public key with everybody, and then you have to when you're writing it, you have to find the person. If they don't have it, you're going to the key server to maybe hopefully find it, or you're contacting them and saying, "Send me your 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 public key." Now, how do you send the public key encrypted? because you don't have that. So now you're sending a public key, not encrypted, which is fine, but it's basically, 
it's basically saying, hey, I'm going to start sending you encrypted stuff. Like, you want to talk about a red flag? Like, I think the FBI should just look for uh, begin PGP encrypted block here. And and now, and if any one of those things breaks, nothing, I mean, it all breaks. And then every five years, you have to rotate keys. I mean, if you want to do it safe, so they can get five years of communication. And then you said, last uh, the last message you got from me is, all right, now if it's on mobile, all of this goes out the window and you can't use any of it. And so now you don't get your email on your phone and you want all of this to be encrypted, like all of it or only the secret stuff. I mean, what are we encrypting here? So it's, or you know what? Uh, I'm on Signal, I'm on WhatsApp, I'm on iMessage. Pick your threat level, pick the one that you want and then message me there, right? That's what I feel like. Email clients break PGP all the time. Oh, hey, did your did your like encryption program that you copy and paste from not add the line breaks in the right place? And now Gmail has added their own line breaks to make things more readable. Absolutely. Yeah, guess what? Your your signature is broken, and your message cannot be decrypted now. Um, right? Because that that happened a lot with old like I, the the old like GPG for Win stuff. Uh, and in Gmail, that broke a whole lot of things for a whole lot of people. Um, so also, there's no perfect forward secrecy. So what you said about, oh, hey, now you have five years to use encrypted email before your key expires. Yeah, if that key gets grabbed or compromised or cracked in any way, yeah, literally everything you have done with that key is now open. Whereas a system like Signal or WhatsApp, right, with constantly rotating keys through ratchet algorithms, um, right, when you crack one of those keys, the Signal keys are rotated constantly. Even like mid-conversation, there will be like a handshake process going back and forth behind the scenes without you even knowing about it, rotating and re-upping those keys. So you always have a minimum amount of compromisable information if one of the keys is broken or if one of the keys is leaked or whatever, right? With PGP, nah, nah, you got you got your key pair. That's what you use unless you're ratcheting between every conversation, which is going to get super weird because email clients in PGP tools by default don't really know how to work with that system. Um, so you've got the single key vulnerability. Um, and key changes are events, man. Like huge events. Um, I, you know, I had to go through a full like a ceremony basically to get my my old key out of use and my new key in use and making sure that's all updated isn't trivial, right? Clients are built with the the best intentions of, oh, well, we'll just go to the key server and get the one that's not expired. But frankly, the only product that's really made PGP even semi usable has been Keybase. Uh, and then then you're back to centralization, right? Then you're back to, well, if you want my key, you have to go to this one place over here that I don't control or own. And hopefully they stay around and they don't get bought by by a, a teleconferencing application. Oh, no. Um, right. Yep. <laughs> like there's there's a lot of problems here. <clears throat> uh, mobile mobile is a trash fire. I have done PGP email on my phone. Um never want to do that again uh so like what what do you do the ecosystem is not there uh so so instead you you back off and you say okay well let's let's handle this at the service level right let's look at hush mail uh let's look at proton mail let's look at all of these these various players in the game that's like oh we have encrypted email do you know how interoperability works right xmpp slash jabber slash the old google talk worked in the exact same way and had the exact same problems that encrypted email still has today. So it's an open system, it's decentralized, and anyone can talk to anyone. It's beautiful, and frankly, it's a miracle of technology that it all works as well as it does. Spam and all, still a miracle that it works really, really, really well. But what if you want to change email entirely? What if you want to change it at the basest protocol level, how it works across the board, how are you going to get everyone on board? And as the you're creators of, of XMPP found out, you're, you're just not, right? There's Bob's server, 
with 20 million users on it and he isn't going to update because frankly he doesn't care about your fun little feature that you want everyone to use uh so then you have a net split you've got you've got like some people on the latest version of the software and some people on the oldest version of the software but you have to maintain that compatibility promise because you don't want to cut off the people from bob's servers there's a lot of people there Right, So then you need to make the new stuff work with the old stuff, which means that now you've segmented your features and people on the new stuff are going to get better security than people on the old stuff. And then it all depends on the conversation. And if you have old group chats and the, the people on the old version of the protocol don't have the new features and like it devolves into this giant mess of, of like interoperability and compatibility and, and like versioning standards uh and you can just never make a consistent headway in a decentralized environment this is actually exactly uh the argument that moxie makes when it comes to why can't you decentralize signal well it's because to bring everyone up to speed on the new version of the protocol is literally a boiling the oceans problem it is extremely difficult and a lot of work and frankly not much benefit over just centralizing the thing and saying this is the one place where you can get it sorry uh i well, understand I, I was gonna say oh i was gonna say the problem is is that we've all said this when we talk about encrypted messaging getting your friends to get off sms is next to impossible it just doesn't work and we've been trying for 25 years now to say, you know what, there's better systems, just do it. And they're like, no, I want to be SMS. There's always that one person. And I hate the argument, well, screw them, we're not going to do it. Well, you can't. I mean, even if it's that one person, that's a customer, that's a whatever it is. We're still using fax machines. Fax machines are still in existence. Try getting a mortgage without a fax machine. It is very, very hard. Okay, so you're still dealing with with really old legacy technology and to say we're going to make this paradigm shift over to encrypted email unfortunately it's just not going to work or, i mean unless I, i'm not smart enough to make it work i don't know yeah really the the best way the best way to have something like this work is do the thing that broadcast television did in the u.s I, I want to say not too long ago, but I'm also old and I remember this event. But when they went from an analog broadcast signal to digital, they had cutoff dates and it was well publicized. But that's because there's a central standards body in the United States that was able to say, hey, as of this date, this thing, this analog broadcast tech isn't going to work anymore. We're going to digital broadcast tech. And on this date, you have to make it work or we're going to fine you for like standards on the internet those kind of like regulatory bodies exist but they're really they can't find anyone the tech is all open source right like it's in use by anyone and everyone they can't really find people they don't really have a lot of power other than saying you should do something this way uh right so for changing email like how are you going to change that at the protocol level? And the answer is, frankly, you can't. So encrypted email providers, right? So let's take let's take Proton Mail. So you send an email from one Proton Mail user to the next. Cool. With some cool things and like password based key derivation algorithms, like uh, what you or password based key derivation functions. What you can do is, yeah, you could theoretically end to end encrypt. Um, like one Proton Mail's uh, email to the next one, because you can, when you control both endpoints, you can make a really strong uh, compatibility guarantee that yeah, these endpoints are going to talk to each other, right? You can you can have that one central system making those kinds of high level decisions uh, about how the information is going to flow from one side to the next. Cool. So what if a Proton Mail uh, user is sending an email to a Gmail user, right? Unless all you're sending is a link back to Proton Mail that says click here, we're going to do it on our side. Yeah, the email has to work on this standards based level, right? The Proton Mail has to be able to send and receive emails from everywhere else. So does using Proton Mail outside of the Proton Mail ecosystem affect anything? And the answer is no, of course not. Um, right. When, when you send an email from Proton Mail to anyone else, right, it's, it's going to use the same relays and the same TLS connections and, and the same protocols as everyone else, because if it didn't, 
the email just wouldn't work, right? You wouldn't get things from, from anyone outside that ecosystem and sending it, you wouldn't be able to send anything because nobody knows what you're talking about. You're not speaking the right language, right? You have to, you have to kind of lower yourself to the, the greatest common denominator of here's the standards that everyone knows and speaks and we're going to use this thing. Um, and every encrypted email company out there is faced with that same kind of calculus, right? Internally, we can do all this cool stuff, but we can't evolve the state of the art outside of ourselves because we just can't control that. Um, and email is going to be like that, right? It's a completely decentralized model. There's not really a great upgrade path to bring everyone along. Uh, right, WireGuard's trying something interesting where they their version of the protocol has baked in. You will use this encryption algorithm. You will use this hashing algorithm, and this is exactly how the tunnel is constructed. And if they change any of those parameters, it increments the version number. Right, version two works like this, and if it doesn't, then it can't be called version two, and you can't connect anything. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting how they've structured their standards to. They're gonna try to like insulate themselves a little bit from the decentralized problem and bring everything up like through version numbers. I'm waiting to see if it works. It hasn't been enough time for that sort of situation to play out yet, but uh, here's to hoping. Um, with email though, we don't really have that kind of benefit, unfortunately. If you wanna play in the email, in the uh, email park, you gotta speak the same language as everyone else, which is the standardized email protocols we have right now and have had since a while so now that we got through all the other non the uh, the i don't want to say the nonsense discussions the security parts of it just changing your email is if you're not getting an email what's the big difference well it's not just email okay if for me i'm on gmail and i have a calendaring system that i share with my wife and my kids soon and a whole bunch of other people for me to go i'm going to be high and mighty and move this first i have to leave gmail and Google Calendar and everything else. And you may say, and I was actually thinking about moving to Outlook because Outlook actually does have a phenomenal product. The problem is now the calendars don't talk to each other and nothing else talks to each other. So you're not just losing email. You're like, oh, I'm gonna decentralize it. So my email is one thing and I'm gonna run my own in-house uh, card dev server and everything. No, you're not, or LDAP, you're not doing that. You're, you're hooking into one platform or the other. So. If you're putting contacts and you're using Apple Calendar, you're doing you're still using Apple services. If you're doing it on Android, you're still using Google services, but it's just now you have to move. You have to move yourself and you have to move everyone else. Moving to email is actually moving email is not that just email is not that hard because no one knows your email anyway. The first thing I'm going to ask my friends is, "Hey, what's your email again because I forgot it." Or I had it. Is this still your email? Are you still using this? It's been 10 years since I sent you an email like for my wedding uh, or this special occasion, is it changed? Oh, it has? Okay, can you give it to me? And then we go to, well, if I'm at, and I'm doing this all over Signal or WhatsApp or whatever it is, like, you know what? Why don't I just text you over this? And I think we said at the beginning, the only mail that I'm actually getting is from corporations. They're not gonna change. They don't need to be secure. They have data retention policies. I mean, so who really cares because everything is getting stored. So, so, okay. And if you want to talk about encryption, all of them have some sort of Gmail to Gmail sort of encryption. I mean, it's okay if you don't trust Google in that sense, but they have something same with Outlook, Outlook to Outlook or whatever it is. What I do wish that the big three can do is say, Hey, we're going to come up with this other system. So if we can tell that you're using the same the same servers or the same headers. Maybe we can come up with our own, like, I don't want to say minimalist encryption that that can happen, but I don't even think that's going to happen. I think it's just, it's just one big mess. And instead of paying monthly for something or trying to convince people, I think you just leave your email the way it is, even if that's on AOL and just focus on getting a more encrypted, uh, whether it's signal or, or stay with iMessage or just focus more on being more secure other ways. Yeah. And it, like, this is, this is kind of weird for me to say, but because this is a security show where we try to talk to real people about how you can make your real lives more secure. I gotta say when it comes to encrypted email, 
I've given up and I think you should too. Um, and it's, it kind of, it hurts me a little bit to say that because I've spent a lot of time working with PGP and living in the encrypted email ecosystem. But I can, I can honestly tell you the effort is not worth the benefit. You, you are, you are losing out by going down this path. The best thing you can do is if, if you're currently having one of those like philosophical kind of pain that how do I make this thing better, this aspect of my technology life. For email, I think the answer is just don't have the conversations that you need to be private over email. It's the wrong system for it, right? Just just like you wouldn't try to have uh, a private conversation in the comment section of a news website, don't try to have a private conversation over email, right? Find a messenger, find some other way. If you need to, you can do it. Uh, I'm not saying that it's it's bad or wrong to try to get these things. What I'm saying is if you're trying to secure email, you're probably trying to secure the wrong thing, right? The, the, those horses have left the barn. Building a better barn door right now isn't going to do you much good. The horses are gone and have been since the standard was written. Uh, it's been a long time. And, and frankly, email was never designed to be secure. For that matter, the internet at large wasn't designed to be secure. It was just designed to get the thing working. Um, sorry about that. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Talk about it in the WhatsApp group. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. I'm I'm a Luddite. Like, like yell at me. That's totally valid. You can tell me I'm wrong. Uh, I'm just giving you the opinion that, uh, you know, email and securing it, not really worth it. Look, I, I've known Tom for, I don't know how many years now, forever. And I don't know if we exchanged more than a handful of emails. And every single time I'm like, hey, what's your email this time? Because it's there's a million other ways to communicate secure and we did the whole encrypted key thing like we we, we did all of that and it was one of those yeah i'm really oh. powerful and then i'm too tired i'm literally too tired of this to deal with that that was all of our point. all of our encrypted emails to each other were hey did i get the the public key right hey do yeah. you have a new key hey how do i make a key oh i've got the key hey let me test sending this attachment oh wow that works like literally, that, that's all of our encrypted messages. And that's all anyone's exactly. encrypted messages are. Like nobody nobody discusses anything important over PGP. Uh, I don't even know if the, the supplier that I set up or the company that I set up 10 years ago is still using the PGP system I built. Hopefully not. Hopefully they just said, I don't know, man, here's our signal phone numbers, use these. Uh, Cause that's honestly uh, the easiest solution going forward. I mean, and then you get uh, that I love this one. Click here to download your encrypted email because it renders an Outlook thing that that they're showing you. Anyway, we're, we're over time, but we spoke about this. Yeah, come find us in the Signal group. We can talk about this. I, if, if you're, I, I, just final thoughts that don't switch your email. Find another way to communicate. I mean, that, that was the entire topic. Just find another way. If we're wrong, we're sorry we're wrong, but we don't really care. So message us, let us know, and we will see everyone next week. Uh, bye. bye, everybody.